Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we are going to work on a necklace using the um, pendant piece from Falling Leaves and some of their beads. I haven't really decided what I'm going to make, how I'm going to make it yet, so we're going to drop down and design and then we'll see about getting it made. So let's do that. I have dumped out a whole bunch of the beads here. I've added some uh, silver daisy spacers. And I have a, a silver um, bale to put our leaf pieces on. Now I'm going to use the one that came in the um, box as well as I'm adding this one I painted the other day. And it's going to go on the top of that and then they'll hook onto our bale. But I did notice when I was looking at it that this piece is not punched all the way through. So I'm going to get my hole punch. And I'm going to finish punching this out. There we go. So there's a nice little punch. And it has a slightly rough spot right here, so we are going to take our file and file it a little bit. It's not really necessary because this piece is going to go over the top of the other piece, so it won't be coming in contact with skin, but I prefer to do it anyway. So it will go right like so, and then we're going to hook it to this. So it looks like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, I'm thinking I want a couple of these carnelians on either side of our bale. And then some spacers. And what I'm going to do is a little daisy spacer, the bigger one, and then the little one again. And then we're going to put one of the big ad adventurines. Like so. Then again with our spacer sandwich here. And I think we're going to put leaf. Now, this time I think I'm just going to put a little one here, and then a little adventuring. Little one. And then we're going to put like three of the little bicones. Back to the silver daisy spacer and one, the smaller venturing. And then, normally I would go with this one, but we're going to switch it to the yellowy one. And then we're going to do our sandwich of spacers again. And I 
think now we're going to put in this pretty guy. Now, first we're going to put in one of the big adventures. Then our sandwich again. Those spacers. And then oops. We'll go right here. Sandwich of spacers on the other side of this big guy. Then we're going to go with the carnelian. Hmm, maybe not too big, I think. So maybe what we'll do is put the carnelian on this side. Then another carnelian. Now if I wanted to, right here I could just start redoing this pattern, but I, um, I'd have to get some more carnelian out, but that's fine, that's not a problem. I wanted to use some of these in here though, and I haven't done so. So maybe what I will do is and then I could put this back down here as well these yeah I could do that so like so Let's start with this and then we'll see where I, how long it is and where we want to go from there. I'm thinking that um, I like this pattern. So um, once I get back to here, maybe I'll just go back down this direction, like up there. So let's get some, um, some soft flex out and I will get, we'll get stringing. I decided to use the fluoride color of Softlex, and so we will just pull some off the spool. Put a bead stopper on this end so they won't just sink straight into the spool so I can't see what it looks like on that side. And we will just start stringing from right here, go around, see how long it is at that point. That's good. Well, 
I don't see where that leaf went to, so we'll have to definitely get another one out. Morning klutziness, I guess. Now, normally I would put this third little silver one on here, but I'm not going to because this has got a big flat space on it. And so I'm going to leave that larger one at, beside it, like there. Same with this side. And you'll notice I have the leaves going in opposite directions. Um, that is a design choice. I just want them to face this direction. So if you wanted everything to go the same direction, you can do that. Now I'm going to put the bale on here, and ordinarily I'd put something underneath it, and I could put a couple of bicones under it. Um, but it's not, the carnelians are going to keep it from romping around too much, but I still may see about finding a couple of seed beads to put under there. Um, if it was a little smaller, I might go for some rubber tubing, but it's so wide of an opening that a rubber tubing isn't really gonna work really good. We just need something for it to lay on. So like I said, I could put in a couple of bicones. But I think because they're bicones, they are working sort of, I don't, really want to use those so let me go and see if I can find some seed beads that will work 
some orange seed beads, number sixes, which are a little brighter than our pieces we're working with, but that's all right because they're going to be underneath anyway. I'm going to put on two, see if I need to have a third. No, I think two will be fine. So we can just shove these aside. We won't be needing them. I'll put them back in the tube in a minute. Then we're just going to go from here, just like we did on this side. And as soon as we get that done, we will then um, measure this to see how long we're getting to be. It's going to sit down there quite nicely. So in, again, up the row we go. Now on this time, the leaf is going upwards instead of down, like the, so that it's facing into this little um, bunch of beads here. Okay, so here we are at what we have designed so far. I think this is probably only maybe a foot or a little longer, so we'll need more, of course. It is, looks like 13 inches probably. So of course we need at least, for an 18 inch, we need at least five more inches. So what I'm thinking, and I think I want it to be at least 20, maybe even 22. So we're gonna start this pattern up again right here, because we've left off with with over here so um, we will go to the large Now we want the, the um, I guess they call these magmas, the, the color. Huh, this one's a different size, let's get it out of here. Here, so this is the little yellow one that goes on this side, and then we go to the three pattern and the bigger green. Three pattern again, which looks like I need to get some silvers out. And then a leaf.
and a nugget. Now we're going to have to start putting things in that I don't have out, and I need to get some more wire out also because, as you can see, I'm almost out here. But let's see how much longer that made this. If this is like, like 10 or 12 inches on this one side, we'll just make this to be about the same. I don't think we want to put this much in here. It'll make it too big. But I could just put the other carnelian in, and that would make it 22 inches, and I'd be happy with 22 inches. So we'll get a carnelian out of here. Actually, we'll get two, because we're going to need two in the end. So... And we'll put one carnelian on the end and then lengthen our... Frankly, that's a large bead to have ending our necklace, but unless I change it up some and put like another, uh, another small one or something else, it's not going to be a consistent pattern, but it doesn't have to be. It's at the very end. It's going to be behind your neck, so I have to decide what I want to do here because I'm not sure I want this large bead at the very ending of our necklace. So maybe what I will do is instead of putting this on here, or I could make it a little longer and instead of putting in this one, I could put the carnelian and then put some smaller beads up here. Or maybe even just another um, leaf like this and then do this here. Let's let's see how that would look. Um, let's put in our car, back our carnelian back in here. And then instead of going on to this one, let's go on to another leaf. And I don't want this more than 12 inches, so we could still put on, um, I need to get some little silver spacers. We could put on a um, either another larger green or the smaller green so that we are getting two smaller beads at the bottom here. So here is our middle, where our bale is at right here. We have just a teeny bit of space. So I am going to put one of the small ones on over here. And that's going to end up our side over here on this side. So let's put our... bead saver on here. We're going to slide these back down over here. Then we're going to take off some wire here so that we have this goes down here. You go down there. And we want about the same amount. So about right here. So I'm going to get out my flush cutters. And we're going to cut this right here. And then we can put our wire away. And our ruler too for that matter because it's now in our way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're right here on the other side. And we need to finish up the beading on this side so that it matches. So well, let's just start that up. Okay, hey, that should be it. Let's go down the row and make sure that we are the same here on either side. There we go. 
it's looking good. So now all these things can be that we didn't use can be put away. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a jump ring and we're going to put it on our our pendant here onto here. Now I think we're going to get a medium sized silver to do this. Here's one. And I'll dump out three. Oh, that's one of the big ones. That's all right. We will need one of those for our lobster claw at the end. Unless, of course, I was to, to decide I wanted to put, instead of a lobster claw, a, a magnetic clasp, which I still could decide to do. Actually, I think I might put a magnetic clasp on. So we will have three jump rings out. And this one can be put away later. So we will open one of these up. And it should be big enough to do all three because it's a little bigger than some of them I use, than the Tinky Tots. So. Open that up with a twisting motion. Slide our leaf pieces onto here. And then they go onto the bale. Now, because the leaves are taking up space, they don't want to let the bale come on, and so I'm having to adjust where I'm holding my pliers so that the leaves can drop down. Oh, come on, you. Boy, are you being difficult now. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to get the closure to go to the back because um, I think it would look better. I'm not sure I can get it to do it, though. The little gold one went through, but I'm not sure the silver uh, painted one is going to come over to this side. That's opening the jump ring up when I'm trying it. So we'll just need to tighten that back down again. And to do that, you use a little forward pressure till you hear, hear the scrape as they come together. Or maybe I should just open it and slide it around. I could do that too, but it's not that big of a deal. So. There is how our uh, pendant looks on there. Now, if you wanted to, here is an option, and that is, hmm, those aren't looking like they're sitting down flat. They're not, I don't like that. So we're gonna open this back up and switch it to that bigger one.
So now we'll do this again. Oops, backwards. The one doesn't make any difference, the gold one, rose gold one, but the green one does because it's painted on one side and it only has patterning on one side, so we want to make sure that it's laying properly. So yeah, there it's laying much better now, so there we go. Now the other option, what I, what I was going to say, other than putting on our clasp, is if you wanted to, you could actually even make a little dangle here or even put some beaded spots right here. Like, say, you wanted to do like so. Or even put, where did it go? There they are. Like. We could uh, hang a little something here. On top of this, if you wanted to. Or dangle it down from the bottom. I'm thinking I sort of like that little guy on there. So I may get a um, head pin out, make a little wrapped piece here, and hang it on here with the rest of the stuff. I think that would be cute have a ball head pin. We're going to put our little leaf on there. And then our little spacer. And our bicone. And so when I wrap it, it's going to sit about right here. And I think that'll be pretty. So let's do that. We're going to, let's see, we want it to go in. Oh, it doesn't matter because I can roll them. So bend it. Get our stepped bell making pliers out. Use the smallest one. Go over and around. Bring her over. Bring her back. Straighten her into our lollipop shape. Like so. Now we're going to take the loop where it comes together. See, those are the ones that open easier. Yep, so and we're going to grab hold of where the wires come together, switch hands, and then I'm going to wrap this baby up. I don't think it can take this last wrap, so let's cut her off. And tuck it in. Now be careful when you're tucking because that is a glass bicone up there. And you don't want to accidentally break it. I think it needs to be trimmed a bit more. There we go. Now we're going to hook, open that back, the um, jump ring back up, and we'll hook the um, the little thing, this little piece onto it. So let's open her up. Now, you don't want to open jump rings up a lot. It weakens them greatly, but you can open them a few times. There 
there now. That's going to hang like that. Isn't that cute? I like it. I think I like it. Let's see. It looks like we might have our wire just a little bit crooked. It's better. So now the last thing to finish up our necklace is to put on our magnetic clasp on this other end. So since we're going to put it on with jump rings, what we're going to do is, oh, I need to get some, would help, crimp tubes out. Now I had debated using a lobster claw because if you do a lobster claw then of course you can um, put an extender on if you want but I don't think I want I don't think it's necessary so we'll just take one of these ends off put our crimp tube in now you can put your jump ring in right now or you can wait till later I am decided I'm just gonna wait till later Though it does sort of make a good fulcrum for pulling them through, but... I just need enough to... so my jump ring can go through. So that looks good to me. So that's what we're going to use right there. I'm going to get my uh, bell making pliers out. Or not my bell making pliers, but my crimping pliers. And I use the magical crimper, so we'll just get this in here and crimp it, turn it, and you keep turning until it won't go down anymore and it looks like a little ball. See? So now we pull, see if it works good. It's working great. So now we want to trim our excess wire off. Make sure you get the right wire. And then we'll slide everything back over here. Roll it up so that you don't get it overly stiff when you crimp it here. Other crimp tube. Again, I could put my uh, um, I didn't go through the crimp tube. Duh. I could put my um, j jump ring on right now if I wanted to. It makes a great um, Oh, come on you. Okay, there we go. It makes a good thing to hold on to as you're pulling these around, but it's not necessary to do that. Okay, it needs to be just a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's make sure we're down good. We seem to be. Now we'll get our crimping pliers out. Go into that spot and crimp. We'll turn and crimp. Looks like we're good there. So now we'll cut this extra wire off. And now we just need to get our magnetic clasp and put on it and she'll be done. And put things away. Hey, I've got a copper magnetic clasp out. Now these are tiny, but don't let them fool you. They're very strong. I can't get them open. There we go. I had to stiff my fingernail in between. So what we're going to do then is take one of our jump rings. I always tell people if they uh, have, if I have a magnetic clasp on them and they purchase it, I always say, slide the magnet sideways uh, to get it to release because it is not going to want to. Okay. 
Come on, you. Let me go up. There we go. Now the other side. And there we go. Let go. <laughs> So there is our clasp. As you can see, it, I had to put quite a bit of pressure to pull it apart. But there is our finished necklace. I think it turned out really spectacularly. Hope you enjoyed making this with me. So anyway, there is our beautiful necklace. I think the pendant we made turned out very pretty, don't you? So anyway, all finished. It's got a magnetic clasp. And I think it ended up being 24 inches, if I remember right. Exactly 24 inches, perfect. So there we go. Using our bargain bead box, falling leaves. Very pretty necklace. Hope you enjoyed making this with me, and we will see you next time. This is Rose from In Rose's Garden. Bye-bye.